Okay, so now that we've talked about how enzymes work and how um, basic regulation works or inhibition works, uh, we're going to look more into the enzyme kinetics. Okay? So enzyme kinetics, we have this basic graph right here. Um, and so this is just basically how um, the activity of an enzyme works. And so on this side we have V, and down here we have S. So S is the substrate concentration, and V is the speed. So V is the speed and S is the concentration of the substrate, okay? Um, and two more points, oh, so, so what that means is that as the substrate increases, the, the speed of the enzyme or the enzyme activity will increase, and that should make sense. If you have this enzyme like this, um, and now you have only one substrate, right? You only have one A, or we'll call this A, um, the chance of it finding this place is very unlikely. So that's why the speed of that or the enzyme activity would be very low. But now imagine we just increase this by 10. Okay? The chances of one of these getting into this active site is much more likely. So that's why the substrate concentration is all the way up here and your V is so much higher than when you only had one. Okay? So that's pretty much how it works. But there's two more points that we want to note. So the second one, or for this first one would be uh, v max. So V max is the maximum velocity or the maximum um, activity of the enzyme. And you can imagine that an enzyme can only go so fast. So no matter how much we change the substrate, no matter how much we add, so we could add an infinite amount, this enzyme can only work so fast. It can only get something in and, and push something out. I mean, that's just how things work. Okay, so that's our V max, and we see that all enzymes will eventually have some type of V max. Um, and this is the one half V max. One half V max. Um, all that is saying is that you get V max. Say this was at ten. One half V max is one half. Um, so it would be five. So what what is what's the importance of that? Well, the one half V max is not so important, but what it correlates to the substrate is important, which is Km. So Km equals the substrate concentration when. Um, it is one half V max. When we're at one half V max, okay, that's what um, Km is, our substrate concentration at that specific point. Okay, um, so there's a relation between all these which says that V equals V max S over S plus Km. Okay, um, so will we need to know this for the MCAT? You don't worry about memorizing this equation. If you can, okay, that's great. Um, but if not, don't worry about it because this rarely shows up. This rarely shows up. We mainly just need to know how to read these graphs and they'll give us this equation on the test and you can probably figure out what to do with it. Um, but in addition to that, we have something um, that is cooperativity. Okay, so I'll put this right here. So cooperativity. So this is the same um, V versus S. So cooperativity is when um, you have multiple subunits and they interact together. They interact together. So uh, one example would be something like hemoglobin. So if we have hemoglobin, we know that there's four subunits. We have two alpha and two beta. Um, and hemoglobin, if we remember, um, it gets oxygen. It carries oxygen in our blood. Um, so the chances of one hemoglobin molecule, if one hemoglobin molecule gets grabs some oxygen, all the rest will grab it at a much rapid, much faster rate. So the chance of one guy getting it um, is somewhat low. But if one guy gets it, the second guy will will have a much higher chance of getting it, and the third guy will have an even higher chance of getting it fourth one, and so on and so forth. Um, and so how does that graph look? Well, it goes the shape of sigmoidal. And what we see here is that at a low substrate, so when only one is attached, um, our, our speed of the enzyme is going to be very low. But when we have you know, one, two, three, or four even, our V goes dramatically increasing. Um, so that's just one thing to note. Sigmoidal, co sigmoidal curve for cooperativity is what we have to know. And the most typical example of cooperativity in enzymes is hemoglobin. So the final thing we're going to be talking about is inhibition. So inhibition of enzymes. Okay? So there's two types, competitive and non-competitive. So these are, there, there is a third one as well, but we don't need to worry about that. So all we need to know is there's competitive and non-competitive. 
and we need to compare their KMs and their VMAX. That's all that changes uh, between the two. And this is something you have to memorize. I, I haven't come up with a good way on how to memorize it, but you just know that you have to. Um, so let's just imagine this is the graph of the enzyme normally. So this is just normal activity of the enzyme, normal curve like that. What would it look like if we had a competitive inhibitor? Well, it would look something like this. So what this is saying um, is that Vmax, what has it done? Well, nothing. It didn't change at all. We're still at the same Vmax. What happened to Km? Well, it increased. And so why is that? So our, our one half Vmax is always going to be right here, right? And so for the normal curve, our Km was right here. But then in order for our inhibited one, our Km would be all the way over here. All right, so that's why the inhibited Km increased. All right, so we'll do the same thing for the non-competitive one. What does this look like? So it looks something like that. All right? So obviously Vmax decreased. What happened to Km? Well, Km didn't change at all. And if we see, this is our one half Vmax. And it didn't change. Well, it's supposed to not change, but um, I, I kind of drew the graph not perfectly well. Um, but they don't change at all. They're very, very close together. They, they go along here, and then they just go across like that. Okay. So what we need to know is that for inhibition, competitive versus non-competitive, our KM is going to increase for competitive, Vmax is going to be constant. For non-competitive, KM is going to be constant and Vmax is going to decrease. This is something you definitely want to keep in your memory. It'll, it'll show up on some practice tests or another um, and it's something that you can't just make up. You have to just memorize it.